Today's topic is rabies. Welcome medicos. Let's begin with this positive thought. In the middle of every difficulty, there lies an opportunity. You just need to find it. Objectives of today's topic are introduction, morphology, pathogenesis. We will talk about the mode of transmission, the sequence of events. Then we will talk about clinical manifestation of rabies, laboratory diagnosis, preventive measures, PEP, immunoprophylaxis and treatment. So this rabies virus is a neurotropic virus and hence it causes rabies encephalitis. It is transmitted mainly by uh, dogs, there are other animals also, but 95% cases is reported by uh, dogs and it's almost always fatal. That's why it becomes important to uh, read about this topic to understand what are the preventive measures for it. It belongs to family Rhabdoviridae. This word Rhabdos means bullet or rod shape, which is the shape of this virus, which is a MCQ question also. And the genera is Lysa virus. This Lysa means madness. Coming to the morphology, it is a bullet shaped as mentioned earlier. This width and uh, length is important, 75 nanometer and 180 nanometer. Note that the virus, the dimensions are measured in nanometer. One end of this virus is round and the other end is concave. You can see here, it is bullet shaped. One end is round, other end is concave. It has a envelope and they have a lipid envelope in which 10 nanometer long spikes, glycoprotein G are embedded. The envelope is lined internally by a layer of matrix protein, which you can see here. Talking about the nucleocapsid, it is helical in symmetry and it contains negative sense single stranded RNA. Hence, it is a negative sense single stranded RNA virus. So, their RNA polarity is opposite to that of mRNA because it is negative, no? Hence, they cannot directly translate into proteins. Therefore, what happens is the negative stranded uh, single stranded RNA transcribe into positive single stranded RNA first using the viral RNA polymerases. Then the positive single stranded RNA translate into protein. And also it acts as a template and undergoes replication to form copies of negative standard RNA. So basically you should remember that it has a negative sense single standard RNA. Then uh, it contains nucleoprotein and polymerase proteins. To talk about the antigens, we have glycoprotein G and the nucleocapsid. Nucleocapsid is a viral super antigen. So it is a class of antigen that result in excessive activation of the immune system. You can see uh, the electron microscopy, the bullet saved virus. And this is the diagram. Rabies virus undergoes certain changes when it is serially propagated in animals. So we have two, street virus and fixed virus. These street virus are freshly isolated strains in the laboratory. And when these street virus are propagated in rabbits by serial brain to brain passage, they lose certain properties. For example, negri bodies will not be demonstrable in these. So these two are the important point in this. The most important part is the pathogenesis. So we will be talking about the definition, source of infection, reservoir of infection, mode of transmission and the sequence of events. Rabies is a fatal genotic disease affecting central nervous system transmitted by animals to human beings by a virus. So it is fatal, it's genotic disease and it affects the CNS. Source of infection are infected animals like dogs, cats, bats and other wild animals fox, raccoons, skunks, jackals and mongoose. We have reservoir of infection of uh, rabies, jackals, fox and hyena. They are just the reservoir. They contain the virus but they are not showing any symptoms of rabies. So if a jackal enters a village, bites a dog or injured the dog, then the dog will get affected by rabies and after that it will become the source to transmit rabies. Mode of transmission can be bite or non-bite transmission from the infected animal. Contact with infected animal saliva, this is very important, in the mucosa or non-intact skin. Mainly by infected animal bite, 
licks or scratch now one question should arise here why scratch if we are talking about saliva then why scratch you may have seen dogs licking their uh, paws licking their feet so in that case it also get uh, contaminated and hence it's better to uh, take this precaution because we know rabies is all, almost always fatal then the other route is inhalation of virus containing aerosol it is more important for laboratory workers uh, bat rabies is the one which is transmitted like this then organ transplantation like cornea so if we get a case uh, in a in a patient died due to rabies or any neurological condition and the diagnosis is not confirmed then from that such patient corneal transplantation is contraindicated actually uh, they reported a case where a patient developed rabies after uh, corneal transplantation when it was further investigated it came out that the donor had a dog bite 5 years back but it was uh, he never developed any symptom why because the incubation period of rabies can be very long which we will be discussing in the later slides sequence of events so rabies virus enters through infected saliva then the virus is spread through the nerves to the spinal cord and brain 1 mm per hour this is the speed virus reaches brain and multiplies rapidly and passes to salivary glands then the patient develops signs and symptoms and death occurs it's highly fatal let's have a look so spread of the virus then it multiply locally viral entry to peripheral neurons neuronal spread goes to cns cause infection centrifugal spread and then shed in saliva so it's transmitted by humans by a bite of infected dog it goes and replicate locally for example in muscle or connective tissue then the virus binds to the acetylcholine receptor at nmj neuromuscular junction so where there is a virus bind ach receptor then through the axon in a retrograde fashion centripetal spread along the motor nerves happen it reaches the dorsal root ganglion ascend upward to the cns and then disseminates to hippocampus and cerebellum this two words is very important we'll be talking about it hippocampus and cerebellum then we see centrifugal spread along the nerves to salivary glands skin cornea and other organs clinical manifestation so to talk about the incubation period it's variable typically 1 to 3 months but can vary from 1 week to greater than 1 year may go still 5 um, uh, years 10 years also and what is incubation period it is a time duration between entry of the pathogen to the appearance of the first symptom the manifestation are pain unusual unexplained tingling pricking or burning sensation paresthesia at the wound site so there are two types of rabies furious rabies or paralytic rabies also all these things are related to the distance from the virus to the travel from the site of inoculation to cns hence this incubation period is variable for example in children it will be less if the bites is on head neck or upper limb again the incubation period will be less what is furious rabies in furious rabies they exhibit signs of hyperactivity excited behavior the classical hydrophobia in which if you uh, offer the patient water by just the sight of the water they are fearing that because severe laryngeal spasm occur and they uh, could not drink the water also you can search some videos regarding hydrophobia and aerophobia it's uh, in the youtube also and sometimes aerophobia also if you try to put fan uh, towards them they will uh, held back these are some symptoms of furious rabies after a few days death occurs by cardio respiratory arrest in paralytic rabies in 30% of the cases it is dramatic and usually longer course the muscle gradually become paralyzed starting at the site of the bite or scratch coma develops slowly and eventually death occurs laboratory diagnosis so we will be talking about laboratory diagnosis in animals and in humans 
in animals it's always post mortem diagnosis and in humans we can do both anti mortem and post mortem so rabies in animals so first case the furious rabies the animal becomes aggressive runs amok and bites people coming on its way you may have seen a rabid dog without provoking also the dog will run behind the person crossing uh, uh, the dog and the dog will bit that person and then other case we see dumb rabies the animal withdraws itself from the surrounding and will sit quietly will uh, not move from uh, uh, the place and sometimes the people may confuse it with that uh, the dog is ill or something like that and will go will give some food try to give some food uh, will pat we should be careful regarding this because the dog might be in this phase the specimen collection are brain tissue and salivary glands brain tissue especially form hippocampus cerebellum and spinal cord there are two parts we uh, segregate this specimen into two part to send it one to microbiology and one to pathology department the one which we want to send to microbiology should be preserved in 50% glycerol saline and um, formalin should not be used in the sample otherwise the virus will die and the isolation will be impossible and the other one which we want uh, to send for pathology it should be fixed with jenkers fixative so that they can demonstrate negri bodies these negri bodies these are negri bodies and negri bodies are the inclusion bodies and these are pathognomic of rabies so what are the methods used the gold standard is fluorescent antibody test fat detects rabies antigen then we can use a demonstration of negri bodies by cell stain we also use h and e stain now it can also be a mcq question which of the following stain is used to demonstrate negri bodies the options can be cell stain gram stain albert stain something like that then we have immunohistochemistry uh, in the formalin fixed tissues viral uh, isolation uh, which we do in mouse neuroblastoma cells and baby hamster kidney so these are the cell lines then animal inoculation test intracerebral inoculation into mouse to talk about the diagnosis in humans uh, i'll mention that for the post mortem diagnosis it's same as that of animals so we will not repeat that again here we will be talking about anti mortem diagnosis the specimen collected are saliva csf sample skin biopsies of hair follicles at the nape of the neck that is the back of the neck corneal impression smear and serum so in saliva virus isolation and rt pcr is done serum and csf sample is used to detect the antibodies to the virus and skin biopsy specimen or the corneal impression smear are examined for rabies antigen also there is something called direct immunofluorescent test direct if or uh, direct fluorescent antibody dfa it can also be performed to detect the rabies nucleoprotein antigen so what we want to do uh, that uh, we want to detect the rabies nucleoprotein antigen so how do we do that we do that by using specific monoclonal antibodies tagged with fluorescent dye and because of its high sensitivity and specificity this dfa direct fluorescent antibody is also considered as the gold standard method for rabies diagnosis preventive measures first we will be talking about the pre exposure prophylaxis this is recommended in two condition either the individuals are at high occupational risk for example the vets healthcare workers laboratory workers or forest explorers or the sub population in a remote endemic areas in which uh, they have limited access to uh, post exposure prophylaxis and if annual dog bite incidence is greater than 5% or vampire bite exposures prevail there in these two conditions we will be giving these pre exposure prophylaxis so for pre exposure prophylaxis we have two schedules which can be given to individuals of all ages first is two site intradermal vaccine given on day 0 and 7 and one site intramuscular vaccine given on day 0 and 7 this is uh, likely to provide lifetime protection hence booster is not needed periodically unless indicated otherwise now coming to the most important aspect the post exposure prophylaxis we have three important thing first the local treatment then hyperimmune serum or rabies immunoglobulin rig and vaccines 
In local treatment, the wound should be thoroughly washed with soap and water immediately. No matter what is the severity, what is the grade of the wound, it should be washed with soap and water immediately because we have read earlier that these rabies virus are enveloped virus and it can be killed easily with soap, be it any soap, even washing soap also. After washing, it should be treated with quaternary ammonium compound or tincture iodine or alcohol. Then antibiotics and uh, TT should be given. Rabies immunoglobulin. This anti-rabies immunoglobulin, we have two varieties. Human anti-rabies immunoglobulin and horse anti-rabies immunoglobulin. Now in this horse anti-rabies immunoglobulin, there are high risk of hypersensitivity. Hence, we choose this. But in case this is only available, then we will use this only. Because we know rabies is a fatal condition. Dose. 20 international unit per kg body weight given to high risk groups. Half dose is given in the wound locally and other half is administered intramuscularly. As mentioned, human antisera is safe and preferred. Horse antisera may have the risk of hypersensitivity. Immunoprophylaxis. Types of vaccine. So, uh, earlier there were like it was divided uh, neural vaccines and non-neural vaccines. Now we do not use these neural vaccines because it has many neurological uh, adverse effects. That's why now this cell line derived non-neural vaccines are recommended. We have three purified chick embryo cell vaccine uh, in which uh, these are the cell line purified vero cell PVC vaccine and human deployed cell vaccine. This is the most preferred one. So this is the risk of categorization and recommended anti rabies profile axis WHO 2018. They have divided it into three categories, category 1, 2 and 3. Category 1, it has like uh, touching or feeding of animal, licks on intact skin, no treatment is needed if history is reliable. Category 2, minor scratches or abrasion without bleeding or nibbling of the uncovered skin. Wound management should be there, rabies vaccine will be needed and we should observe the dog for 10 days. If the dog is healthy 10 days, then we will uh, stop the PEP. Category 3. Single or multiple transdermal bites with oozing of blood, licks on broken skin, fresh wound or mucous membrane, direct contact with bats or wild animals, then wound management, rabies immunoglobin rig, rabies vaccine and then observe the dog for 10 days. See, vaccine may be discontinued if animal is healthy after 10 days of bite. Okay. Post-exposure prophylaxis, the schedule is on the day 0, day 3 day 7, day 14 and day 30 with booster dose on day 90. These are the compulsory to take. These are compulsory to take. So this give protection up to 5 years and if uh, within this term, if there is a further exposure, then one or two booster dose on day 0 and 3 can be taken and it will be good. But after 5 years, if again there is exposure, then full 5 dose should be taken. Uh, the dose is 1 ml intramuscular. It comes in a vial of 1 ml. So if uh, uh, you want to administer it intramuscularly, then the whole vial will be used or 0.1 ml intradermal. It is important that these rabies vaccine should never be given in the gluteal region. Never be given in the gluteal region. Even if the patient insists that uh, it should be given in the gluteal region as it will cause less pain, it should not be because due to the presence of high fat in the gluteal region, the absorption becomes slow and the patient might land up having uh, rabies in, uh, in spite of giving them this PEP and that might lead to a medical legal case also. Ob and then as we talked, we should observe the animal for 10 days. If the animal is healthy, then we'll discontinue the PEP. So what is the take home message? These five days are the important and after five years full uh, dose, 1 ml intramuscular, 0.1 ml intradermal, never to be given on the gluteal reason. Coming to the treatment, there is no specific treatment. So prevention is better than cure. Supporting treatment is there like intensive care, management of complications and uh, uh, IFN may be used. Prevention and control. Measures to protect people from rabid dogs should be taken by the municipality. Vaccination of the animals, registration and licensing of all domestic measures, 
and controlling measures on wildlife. We'll get back to you soon. Thank you. Hope it was fruitful. And uh, we'll end it with a positive uh, thought. Every moment is an opportunity. We just need to realize that. Thank you.